Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and yeah, I have my voice back, but it's a long story. I'm going to tell you, like, about my voice at the end, okay? So I don't bore everybody up front. Anyway, uh, tonight we're going to do something that is just a straight through. I'm not stopping it, and I'm not editing it, so I hope I don't do too badly with this. <sighs> Such is life. Anyway... We're going to go through these things kind of quick. There's several different items I want to touch on. And again, I was too hard to just figure out one. So I decided, okay, let's do them all. Put them all together here. This one was something that came up on my creator dashboard that we have in uh, YouTube. And uh, this was one of their training videos on inspiring social change on your channel. I find this highly ironic because <laughs> I've just had an interesting week when it comes to YouTube demonetizing things. And remember, for those of you who think it's about the money, it's really not because when they demonetize it, it doesn't get the same play. They don't put it in like the recommended videos as much, so it, not as many people see it. And if the important thing is getting the information out there, less people will see it. So anyway... I had that happen with the Gitmo one. It was at first monetized until it hit about 58,000 views, and then it was demonetized, and then it, it was remonetized, and then it was demonetized permanently. So I don't understand. I can't figure things out. It drove me nuts just going off and on and off and on. And then, of course, the human trafficking one was demonetized and they reviewed it and they continued to say it is not suitable for most of their advertisers well gotta wonder who their advertisers are right anyway so then this pops up I thought it was quite ironic so it says inspiring social change yeah when you watch this video and I'm gonna put these links down below you can watch them on your own if you want to but it's like Every one of them is a social justice warrior. I mean, <laughs> there is no white heterosexual people that are not feminazis in this video. <laughs> so you can watch it at your leisure and look at it. And it's just like you can tell from the thumbs down that it's not a popular video among the conservative content creators because most of them in the comments were pointing out that you keep demonetizing our videos when we try to do this. We're trying to inspire social change, but you don't like the, the kind of change we're, so we're inspiring, so you end up demonetizing it. So this is the frustration we share. Yes, it is. But anyway, I wanted to share that one with you because I thought it was so ironic after the week I've had. Anyway, I'm going to I'm not I'm not going to show you these because I don't want to take away from their views, okay? But this one you really need to see with this one. It is so funny. It's uh this guy goes into this vape shot and he you can see he has a Trump 2020 shirt on. Oh my goodness. The the guy who was running the cash register went berserk. If you've not seen this yet, oh, you need to watch it because he really did just have an extreme meltdown. I mean, like, he started, he hit him a few times, too. He hit the guy with the Trump shirt. And I'm not hard. Of course, it was, like, girly hitting because, you know, he's, like, yeah. And that's no offense to the girls out there. I know some girls that can really punch. But... You know, I <laughs> I don't want to get myself in trouble there. I'm a girl, okay? I can say that. Anyway, <laughs> this guy, he, he just kept filming. And it really is hysterical. You need to go through and watch it because it's worth watching. Okay, and then I'm going to link to this video too. Please make sure you check these links out. Um, I know that some of you have trouble finding the description but uh, if you look around somewhere on your device, there'll be some little arrow or something that will let you see the description. <laughs> so I can't really tell you because I don't know what device you're using. And I don't really know too much about all the different devices that are out there. So I know that I have a Kindle and it has a little arrow that I have to hit. And then I have a cell phone and there's sometimes a cell phone I have to scroll down a little. So... 
Um, it's different on all the different devices and everything, but there you go. This one is also funny because... <laughs> Kennedy here mocks Pelosi. Oh, it was too funny. I mean, you really need to see this one, too. Uh, she does just a great Nancy Pelosi here. And they have her try different kinds of wine. And the last type of wine, you got to pay attention to that last type of wine. It's very significant that's what they had. Because Nancy Pelosi's daughter said this. As for when she when she was talking about her and how her mother would be, if you look down here, as Democrats assume the House majority in the new year, CNN's John Brent Berman wanted to know how the presumptive incoming speaker handles meetings with, with President Trump. Alexandria Pelosi wouldn't answer at first, but eventually shared a blunt response. She'll cut your head off and you won't even know you're bleeding. That's all you need to know about her. Okay, that's pretty graphic, don't you think? I would never say that about my mom. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's a little weird. And so maybe it ties in with what Kennedy was saying about the third glass of wine. Okay, anyway, this was something else that came up. Uh, the site. Okay, the DC Chronicle here. Guess what? The Flynn Judge Sullivan signed sealed order of discovery in Seth Rich lawsuit. Hmm. So he sealed the documents in the discovery. It's like, why would you do that? Now it can't be talked about until they're unsealed. So this is a very interesting development. Again, I will put this, this is by Matt Couch, I believe, yeah. And I'll put that down below so you can read it for yourself. But, you know, it means that means that whatever we find in our discovery is a defense. Bank records, emails, eBay records, PayPal records, phone records, autopsy, and things we are seeking in our investigations can never be talked about publicly. Isn't that interesting, America? Yeah. So, oh, okay. And it just refreshed the page and gave me all these things at the bottom again. It's an annoying little page, actually. But there you go on that. It was a good story, and I'll link to it down below. And then we have this one. This one is the website that I get in trouble for pronouncing wrong because I pronounce it the way us Midwesterners pronounce it. So I'll just leave the title there. You can look at it yourself and know what it is. The link will be down below, no matter how you say it whichever way. Anyway, Trump proclaims January as month committed to abolition of human trafficking. This goes more into depth than I did yesterday, and I really apologize. I just was not feeling very good. Again, I'll tell you about it at the end. So those of you who don't care, <laughs> you don't have to listen to it. Anyway, uh, if you go through this, there's some very interesting things, but check out this stat. Such crimes are often described as an everyday problem hidden in plain sight. Data from a landmark Global Slavery Index report in July last year found that 1 in 800 people in the United States lives in modern slavery. I found that, like, jaw-dropping. It's like, wow. The phrase is a broad term used to describe victims of forced labor, sexual exploitation or servitude, and forced marriages, among other abuses. One in 800. That's like massive, massive. So, I don't know. Go ahead and read the rest of this. And I'm going to go back and read the declaration again. I just was a little on the tired side yesterday. So, I didn't read through it like I normally do. But, yeah, this has some good information. And I did read this article. Anyway, let's go on. I told you this is just going to be a big bunch of things. So... Uh, this one, I don't have any source for this, okay? This, this Anon posted this on 8chan, and I don't see any source for it, even in the comments, and he didn't follow it up with a source, so I don't know where this came from. And even the last board one, by the way, if you ever go into 8chan, that's what that LB means, last board. That's so when you click on it, you know it, it's not on the same board, and you know it's going to take you to the other board. They also sometimes use PB for previous board. And if you ever post 
I don't recommend a lot of people post, but if you would happen to post, make sure you put those if it's from a previous board. They get really ticked. Okay, uh, this guy just says this was the original post, very informative. Last year, 449,000 Californians received a jury summons to which they replied, I am not a citizen, therefore I cannot sit on a jury. The number one source for jury summons candidates is the voter registration list. Think about that for a minute. That is something significant, but again, I don't know the source for this. So he didn't put any sauce in here. So nobody asked for it either, and it's an old board, so I'm not sure I would get it if I asked for it now. Okay, here's one that's interesting. Oh, of course, my connection timed out. That's for the video. Never mind. Former New York Times editor rips Trump coverage as biased. Surprise, surprise, surprise. A former executive editor of the New York Times says the new paper's news pages, the home of its straight news coverage, have become unmistakably anti-Trump. Whew. Wow, we didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, we all knew that, right? Well, anyway, this is an interesting article about it and saying, you know, this is, it's gotten out of hand. It just has gotten out of hand. And they are more interested in trashing Trump than they are about the American people and about reporting news to the American people. Okay, that really was the last one that I have. I know I've got several other things I could say, but I am kind of tired and everything. So I did want to point out to you, if you happen to follow Q on any of the QAnon or QAnon.pub or any of those other sites that Q's on, you may have had a little glitch last night because I, it, mine showed that there were 10 new posts by Q, but they were actually only Patriot Fights posts from his message board, the Patriot Fight, Patriots Fight board. There was a glitch with it, and I was on the boards last night for a little bit, and there was something going on. People were having trouble accessing it, so I don't know whether the board owner went in and could fix it or if Q had to fix it. I'm not sure what the situation was, but when it got fixed, then it was like 10 new messages, but they weren't new messages. They were just the same as on Patriot's Fight. So anyway, and so that's what happened if you are a Q follower. Huh, so that's what I've got for you tonight. Um, let me tell you why, if you, if you are only interested in that part of the content, you can go ahead and click out now. <laughs> but if you want to hear what the situation was, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, and I don't talk about it really on this channel. I do on my Garden Devotions channel, so if you want to know more about it, go over there. Although I haven't posted over there much since this started. Uh, but it causes, when I do something that's that requires a lot of energy, like Sunday did, because we had massive, I mean, we have like, there were 66 of us there, I think, my almost my entire family. There were about three people missing that weren't there. So it was huge, and it was a wonderful time. Our family gets along magnificently, okay? We really do enjoy being with each other. We have a lot of fun, but it's very tiring for me. And I had been doing little individual uh, crochet items and different items that I made handmade for each one and that's a lot of people and a lot of work and I was I didn't give myself quite enough time <laughs> because of the YouTube channel that takes up a little more time than I had anticipated and so I was really working hard on Friday and Saturday to get those done and uh, I didn't get enough sleep and everything so it made Sunday even more energy draining and when you have chronic fatigue syndrome what happens when you do a big energy expenditure like that you get one day maybe as kind of a grace period where you're tired but not horribly so and then the second day afterwards it just nails you I mean it's like every system in your body stops working so <laughs> that's kind of what happened and that's why my sinuses went bizarre. There really wasn't anything I could do about it except get more rest, which I did. And so I feel a lot better today. 
it, it, I know it sounds strange because it wasn't really related to cold or anything. It's just that's what happens with the chronic fatigue, or at least it does for me. Everybody's kind of different with it, but that's how it works for me. So I am tired today, but I am much better than I was the last couple of days. So I'll, as the days go on, I'll get better. And that's just how it works, and I'm used to it. It's been um, 19 years now, almost 19 years, not quite, but almost 19 years that I've had this. So you just kind of have to learn how to work with it and learn how to keep as much balance in your life as you can. But there's, it's also nice to be able to do some things like that where you spend just about everything you got but it's so worth it because I got to be with my family and some of them are from other states and everything so it was a wonderful blessing I enjoyed it immensely and so yes it was worth it and so anyway I'm back I think I can do pretty well with this now um, you know I'm still tired and that's kind of why we're doing this and I'm not editing it because editing wears me out a little bit um, the focus is hard so anyway, that's where I'm at, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because some of you do care, and the other ones hopefully clicked out before now, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Anyway, but that's the situation. Like I said, I don't talk about it on this channel. I don't intend to, but uh, it's kind of part of my life, and I have to work with it as much as I can. So I do a lot of resting. When I do my videos, I, I do my re uh, some research, I rest. I do some more research, I rest. I record it, I rest. I video, I, I edit the video, I rest. <laughs> While it's rendering, usually I'm resting. And then I upload it and you have to do the thumbnail and the description and everything that goes with it like that. And then once that's done, then I rest. <laughs> So, and sometimes I have it running at night, it's uploading at night, because I live out in the sticks and I have a really, really slow connection. So, that's one reason why I can't do, um, you know, the live streams, sorry. But, yeah, you, you would just see blotches, I'm sure, the video would be horrible and I'd be cutting out all the time. So, yeah, that's not in my near future, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, who knows? life changes and maybe they'll end up putting a really fast line in here and you know <laughs> out in the sticks right but that's okay I like living out in the sticks that's a good thing kind of helps clear your mind so you can think better right anyway that's the situation I have that's what I've got for you and I want to thank you so much for stopping by and I really do appreciate people I'm getting so close to that 40,000 I hope maybe in the next couple days I can hit that yay so thank you yeah yeah, yeah. see <laughs> thanks to all of you who have helped me reach that goal and I just am so amazed at what the Lord's been doing it with this YouTube channel it just is incredible and all I want to do is give you information quality information that I can give you sources you can look up on your own if you need to and we need to get the message out there there's hope we are seeing some things happen I don't know what things are going to happen in January but I think it's significant that this is national human trafficking and what it was a national slavery and human trafficking prevention month I think that's what the whole full title is and that February 2nd is National Freedom Day so I think it's really significant that those are happening right now who knows some people if you do follow Q some people have said uh, I saw a couple of Anon say that if you are if you read Q's post from uh, January of 2018 and take them as if they are now like January 4th would be January 4th of this year that they wonder if that's not what's going to happen so I don't know I who knows we'll find out when it happens but things are gonna happen and I don't know I don't know how it's all gonna work out but I do know it's going to I've seen too much so far happen and I've read too much of these documents being passed and forth, back and forth in Congress to know that, yes, people are aware of what the situation is. There are a lot of good people that we have in there who have been fighting our battle. And who knows what's going to happen when these Democrats take charge. But I think there's a plan for that. 
And so just hang on. Keep calm, as POTUS said. Didn't he say that? Keep calm. So I think we just need to hang in there. Things are going to start happening. And when they happen, it's going to all be so fast. So anyway... Again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.